everybody. I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. And this week, we're going to be talking about Starlink Mini, the product that will change the world. So is this like the iPod Mini? Well, let's find out. So John Krauss, the content director of the Polaris program, you know, that's the program that's sending up spacecraft. He posted this on X. He said, what seems like our first look at the upcoming Starlink Mini product Eager to learn more will be a day one order for me. And at first I thought this was just another random post, but then Elon responded. Elon said, it's awesome. We'll have massive demand in lower income parts of the world. So what do we know about the specs on this thing? Well, uh, news is coming in as we speak, but all I've got so far is that the Starlink Mini will be this Rev1 uh, with built-in Wi-Fi. It is 28 by 24 centimeters or 11 by 10 inches. So about the size of a iPad. And we know a lot about Starlink ourselves because we've tested it in a number of ways over the years, how amazing Starlink is. Right, I mean, last year we tested it on our Ford F-150 Lightning. And I believe we were the first in the world to have a you know in-game kill in a moving vehicle playing a multiplayer game with Starlink. Right. It, that goes right in the Guinness Book of World Records. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it surprised me that we could drive on the highway and the back roads, and all the while, our mobile office that you're seeing here was up and running online through Starlink. Now, if you're new to Starlink, what it is is SpaceX's satellite network of over 6,000 low-Earth orbit satellites, and these dishes that transmit and receive signals from the satellites to connect the internet all around the globe. Yeah, Starlink keeps developing and releasing better and better versions with higher bandwidth and lower and lower latency. You can now buy Starlink in Home Depot, Best Buy. That's how ubiquitous they've become. And Starlink is now available in 100 countries around the world. So from Alaska to Argentina, from Australia to Mongolia. So whether you're camping or in an RV or in a boat in the middle of the ocean, you can now be connected to the internet. And it's truly changing people's lives around the world as we speak, because think about it. If you live somewhere where there is no high-speed internet, then you do not have the same opportunities as people who do have internet. I'm not just talking about whether you can watch Netflix, but the ability to learn and connect and do business all requires the internet now. And so if you don't have it, you're at a huge disadvantage. So Starlink itself is already a huge disruptor, a technology that people did not believe would happen for decades when we started reporting on it a few years ago. And then SpaceX developed reusable rockets, the Falcon 9 rocket that can reland the booster on an autonomous drone ship and then reuse that booster, saving millions of dollars per launch. Effectively, it makes the launching of Starlink satellites so inexpensive that SpaceX has now a network of about 6,000 satellites above your head right now connecting the entire world. Now, why are we talking about this on disruptive investing? It's not like most of us can even invest in SpaceX right now. It's a privately held company. Yeah, only accredited investors, people worth over a million dollars who know the right people can get in on buying shares and you have to buy a lot of shares to get in. So there's kind of two reasons I think we're talking about this. One is that Elon has hinted that Starlink may go public at some point. So I think it's a good idea to keep our eyes on Starlink in case they have an IPO. Disclaimer, we're not financial advisors. We're not telling you how to invest your money. We're just telling you about things that may be happening. Number two, though, Starlink is a technology that is going to affect the world's economy. It's going to allow companies to start and flourish where they wouldn't have been able to before. I kind of think of it as seeds in a desert. There are these seeds, right? Just lying there all across the world, waiting for the right conditions to sprout. But until now, well, <laughs> it's been a desert. Now, Starlink, which I think of as the water, can allow these seeds companies to grow and flourish in places around the globe where the demand is there for certain products and services, but the conditions just weren't right before for them to work. Well, now they can. The disruption is the lowering of the barrier to connect to the internet. No longer do people have to wait for giant corporations or governments to install billions of dollars worth of high-speed cable and fiber optics. They just need this. And now with Starlink Mini coming out, the disruption can go even deeper. Imagine just pulling out this tablet-sized Starlink from your backpack in some remote part of the world and connecting to the internet for a teleconference. You're not so remote anymore. And Starlink was disruptive because before we were talking about how like one Starlink could run probably 10 or 20 people's houses um, in remote parts of the world. And so some plucky um, entrepreneur could upfront, you know, the 500 or so dollars that they would need to get everything off the ground and then basically be a small internet provider, like a micro internet provider for a, a small group of people, you know running some Cat5 wire or, you know, installing a big uh, Wi-Fi thing that could cover a bunch of houses. Now we're shrinking it even smaller to where an individual, pretty much anywhere in the world, could be able to afford this. Exactly. Yeah. And your job as a disruptive investor, if you're a good one, if you want to be successful, is to use this. Imagine how this 
will affect the world. What new companies can now start that couldn't before? Where can existing companies expand to now that internet is available there? You probably know things that others don't in your area. And here's where I want to plug our Now You Know Investor Club on Patreon. Our Investor Club members have access to our Investor Club Slack, where members can share ideas, ask questions, and be immersed in all things investing with people who get it. No wasting time trying to explain EVs and sustainable energy and AI. Everyone here gets it. So the ideas can flow faster. I urge you to check it out. Support the work we do, bringing you news on all things disruptive every week. Yeah, because to me, what Elon said, massive demand in lower income parts of the world. I think as investors, a lot of time we ignore those places in the world. We're like, I'm going to focus on Silicon Valley and Manhattan. But there's a whole lot of places in the world with a whole lot of people doing a whole lot of things. It's just we don't really hear much about it or think there's much money to be made there. But if you can turn on places, whole continents to having the Internet now just overnight, mm. you've now made just incredible value pop up. And I just think that that's where we need to be talking because this is the beginning of a third world country becoming a first world country. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's hard to think about like, well, like what businesses, like what businesses would start in these places? They're so remote or they're so poor or they're so whatever. What, what businesses well, could possibly begin? I was thinking the other day, um, you can't have Uber unless you have a lot of infrastructure, right? You have to have cell towers and you have to have internet um, in across a whole city, right, to have Uber. But now if we go someplace in the world like, say, Sri Lanka, which just got Starlink, they probably didn't have in most of their cities enough cell towers and stuff to make Uber work. Now with Starlink, possibly, it could work, especially if you put these onto each car. And so you can imagine that maybe a network like Uber could pop up in a city where it never could before, even though you had all the other things, you had all the people and the cars and, and all that, but you didn't have the internet. I'm just saying this is the kind of thing where you guys know more than we do about places in the world where things can now happen that couldn't happen before. And even in first world countries like the United States, there are some places where there is no cell coverage. Exactly. And if you wanted to have fully autonomous cars that can be uh, called and recalled and, and driven from place to place, all controlled by the internet, having dead zones means that you have literal dead zones in terms of where those cars can go. Exactly. So now, if you can put a little tablet on top of a car and... I wonder if there's like a company that's really tied in with SpaceX and Starlink. You could be using that technology to enable that car to go anywhere. And as Tesla Economics says, that's really cool. When will I be able to order one? Elon says rolls out in select areas in a few months. Also, Mini can be a great low cost option for a good backup internet connection if your landline goes out. I want to point this out. Now that internet has become so important to our lives and we can't really live without it even for an hour, I think a lot of people want to have backup, right? A lot of people get like, Okay, I've got Fios and I've got Comcast. Mm -hmm. um, and so this could be a great way for a lot of companies, for instance, to have backup internet. We do it. I mean, we have a Starlink outside that if our internet goes down on one of the major providers, Starlink takes over and it has in the past so that we never have to be without it. And you may have heard of, of like um, all these different internet companies, like people will be like, oh, I've never heard of Spectrum before, right? They don't operate in your area where they do operate. They are the monopoly, right? Most of these uh, internet providers are all monopolies. And so this is a way for Tesla to get into every single one of those markets and say, we are going to disrupt those markets because if they can bring the cost down on the internet, who is going to switch? Oh, everybody and everywhere. And they don't have to like put in and, and install all sorts of infrastructure to be able to enable landline communication. Yeah, because to your point, I mean, if you drive down the street and you see a lot of those dishes on the sides of people's houses that say like dish TV and mm -hmm. stuff, that's because as soon as satellite TV came into certain areas, it disrupted cable. And the same thing is going to happen here. William Seller says the latency results is what is crazy. This is faster than some terrestrial Internet providers. And my bits are freaking going to space, man. Elon says, yes, better ping than many cable internet connections. And Elon says, I just set it up right now and I'm writing this post through space. Took less than five minutes, easily carried in a backpack. This product will change the world. About half the price of the standard dish to buy and monthly subscription, but you can still watch multiple 4K video streams simultaneously with 23 milliseconds of latency. And he published his speed test, which kind of broke his speed test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that uh, for a lot of us, we're first just hearing the word Starlink and we don't even know much about it. We're here to tell you that we've been testing it for years and it 
it works. It's amazing. Um, it's not like one of these things where it's finicky and you have to point it just right and then you lose it. No, it just seems to be getting better and better. This phased array antenna that they're working on just means that, and because there's 6,000 satellites, means that you know in the very early days, there was far fewer satellites and only covered certain parts of the world. Now, as his network is just basically encompassing the whole world, it's working amazing. And so I'm just so excited that now it's gotten smaller because Let's be honest. Before, if we tried to bring that on a backpacking trip, there was, you know, a lot of stuff we had There'd to bring with one it. One person with a very large backpack right. and it would just be full of Starlink. But now that we're talking tablet size, I think this is a game changer. And I think Elon's right. I think this product's going to change the world. Forget money. If you're a student, if you're a you know a child out there wanting to learn about things in the world, but you live in a place with no high speed internet, your life is now changed. You mm -hmm. can now be connected to the rest of the world. And I think that, that in itself is going to be amazing. All these new potential entrepreneurs out there that could never be connected before are now going to be able to start companies. So I would love it if you guys joined our Patreon. I would love it to hear from you in Slack about what companies you think are going to be affected by this because as a disruptive investor, this just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. This just opens up a whole new world of potential companies to invest in. Yeah, it's a speed boost on the intellectualism of the world. I mean, what an amazing thing. And Almost nobody's going to talk about it. And I love how in the news, they're just constantly trying to find a negative spin on this. They're like, it ruins the night sky. There's a tribe where now they're into porn. Yeah. Even though they're not, that was a fake story. Um, and I don't know. I don't feel bad for the people who are like, I tried to take a picture of Jupiter, but all these Starlink satellites ruined my picture. It's like, right. Well, we did. We've sent spacecraft to, to Jupiter. Why do you need a pic? Like, that's like, again, well, and it's, it's like going to the Louvre and taking a picture of the Mona Lisa with your phone. I, I get it. It's fun to go look at Jupiter with your telescope or whatever. But why do we have to be like, I don't think the whole world should get internet well, because I want to take a picture of the space. And it's, it's a fake argument because it's, people somehow think there's like an umbrella around the Earth no, or something. And these these satellites are hard to spot, actually. So it's not like they're blocking anything. Yep. Um, but of course, you know, the media has to make a negative out of it because this is the only company doing it. And it only got here because Elon, I mean, look at all the steps, right? Elon had to start a rocket company that could reland a rocket before it made it cheap enough. We still have ULA, by the way, that's flying the um, Atlas V rocket, which by the way, what rocket engines are in that? Um, oh, Russian rocket engines. So it can't fly without Russia. And yet SpaceX comes along, makes a new rocket that's relandable, with a cheaper. new engine. Yep, and Boeing, Boeing is still just going with the old fashioned, let's just use Russian engines. It costs millions of dollars more. No, SpaceX said that's stupid. Now that they did the Falcon 9, they can make this so cheap that they could launch their 6,000 satellites. Well, everyone else said that's impossible. He did the impossible. He's changing the world. And as a disruptive investor, I'm just so excited. And, and right now, right now, the higher population density areas are going to be bandwidth limited in terms of uh, satellite coverage because you had have like a couple satellites over it and they only have so much bandwidth. But, you know, Falcon 9 is great and all. When you have Starship, do you know how many satellites Starship is going to be able to launch per yeah. launch? And do you know how much more reusable Starship is going to be? Yeah. Instead of having a second stage that's going to be lost, you're going to have that second stage come back and land. Yeah. So the booster and the second stage is going to come back. All you have to do is, is reload it like a magazine with more satellites, and then you can just launch 100 more satellites. That is what we're talking about. And that is where we could get to bandwidth for cities, where there's just going to be enough Starlink satellites where you're just going to be like, oh, of course. Yep. Of course, I'll just watch my movies from the satellite. Exactly. It, it starts in the remotest parts of the world, which I think is so exciting, but it's going to encompass the whole thing. It's really amazing. Anyway, comment down below what you think that this new technology could do in terms of new companies and new services. Um, and then join us over on Patreon. Support the work we do for as little as a buck a month. And we'll see you guys there. See you next week on Disruptive Investing.